Hello and welcome to this new course in which we will talk about C sharp. This course will cover the following topics. First, you will learn how to write your first app and you will get introduced to the application that we will use for coding. Next, we will talk about basic syntax. After that, we are going to cover data types and type conversion. The next topics are C sharp operators and we will take a quick example in which you will learn how to calculate your age. Then we will move on to cover data types, different data types and how to deal with them in C sharp. Then we will go in detail explaining if statement. We will talk about nested if and C sharp logic operations. Then we will talk about if else and if else if. Moving forward, we will talk about how to increment and decrement values, and we will talk about priorities in mathematics inside C sharp programming. The next topic that we are going to cover is switch case, which is basically a more tied, a more tied up version of if. We will talk about loops, simple for loop, and we will take some examples, simple loop apps. Then we will talk about nested for loops, and we will talk about while loop and do while loop. After that, we are going to cover break and continue, which are very important topics when dealing with if statements and loops. After this, we will cover arrays and strings and how to deal with them, how to initialize them, how to read and enter data to and from arrays and strings. And we will talk a little bit about basic functions and optional para function. Then we will end by talking about try and catch in C sharp. Other things that you're going to learn in this course are how to debug your application correctly, how to go with the flow of data and how to consider each line of code, how to read it correctly, how to debug it correctly, and how to know the type of data in and out with each line of code. This is Educational Engineering Team, and we are sure that you all enjoy this course. Hello and welcome to this new lesson in which we will talk about how to download and install Microsoft Visual Studio. First, you must go to Visual Studio website, which is basically a Microsoft website, and choose the version that you want. We want the Windows version, and we want to install the Visual Studio community. Click on Download VS Community 2017. You will get redirected to this page. As you can see, we have the download here at the bottom left corner of the display. This is the .exe file, which is basically a web installer. Once you click on it, it will start loading. Now click continue. Wait a little bit until the download of the online installer finishes up. Click on install in the Visual Studio Community 2017 and wait until it gets things ready. Here you can see there is a lot of workloads. You can choose any of these. As you can see it covers a variety of topics. Web and cloud programming, Windows programming, mobile and gaming programming and other interesting topics. You can choose any of these, but for this course, what we are looking for is the C sharp Windows programming environment. So just click on that one. As you can see, it's called 
dot net development or dot not desktop development and if you looked at the right corner you can see that it has C sharp and visual programming Here it is, C-Sharp and Visual Basic. Click on Install. Now you need to just sit and wait for the installer to download and install the required files. It will take some time depending on the speed of your internet connection. But don't worry, it won't take long. Okay, now as you can see, you just need to click on the launch and Microsoft Visual Studio software will start running Visual Studio 2017. As you can see, this is the main user interface and from here you can click File, New Project to start a new project and you can choose Visual C Sharp, Console Application, or Windows Form Application. Click on File, New, Project. Choose cons Console Application from here. And click OK. Click No. We don't want to save the Windows Form Application. And here is your first console application. Click on start and you should get black screen on your laptop or computer as you can see. This is it. We are educational engineering team, a team of skilled engineers sharing knowledge with the world. Educational engineering team is a leading team in microcontroller industry with over 11 years of experience in teaching and doing practical projects. We strive to put all our hands on experience into these courses. Instead of superficial knowledge, we go into the depth of the topic and give you the exact step-by-step -step blueprint on how to time simple as well as complex topics in easy and bite-sized videos. This real-world knowledge enables you to grasp knowledge easily and you are, can apply this learning immediately into your life and projects. Education engineering team has been in programming and microcontroller business since 2007. We have been part of many projects. Over the course of these years, we have gained a good insight into students and educators' needs. We are passionate about sharing all our collective knowledge with you. As of 2018, we have already taught over 50,000 students and counting. You can see the number here. We have like 54,000 students, 66 scores, and more than 1,000 review. Uh, this is Ashraf. I'm the educator of this course. I will teach you, I will take you through this course. I'm a mechatronics engineer, electronics and programming hobbyist and maker. I create online videos on educational engineering YouTube channel for, which has more than 2 million views now. And I'm also the author of two microcontroller books. As a chief educational engineer since 2007 at educational engineering team, the company that I founded, um, I have the, a mission to explore new trends and technology and help educate the world and make it a better place. Educational engineering offers educational courses and boot camps, articles, lessons, and online support for electronic hobbyists, programming hobbyists, microcontroller hobbyists, STEM students, and STEM teachers. That team also work as freelancer engineers. 
we help many students in their graduation projects and provide guidance and consulting for many students. I will be with you in this course. Hopefully you will enjoy it. I know that I took a lot of your time, but you need to know who's teaching you and what you are going to take and why you should take this course. I'm very sure that this course will add a lot of value to you. Uh, I hope to see you inside this course. If you have any question before joining, you can drop me a message and I'll be more than happy to answer it for you. This is Ashraf from Educational Engineering Team. Happy learning. Now, after installing Microsoft Visual Studio, let's start our first app. Go to the Start menu and from there, go to the Microsoft Visual Studio. As you can see, I have Microsoft Visual C Sharp 2010 and if we scrolled you can see Microsoft Visual Studio 2017 click on it as you can see Visual Studio 2017 but any version uh, of the software will work but since this is like a free version so you should get it as I explained in the previous lesson now click file new project as you can see this is the main user interface to create a new file or a new project in microsoft visual studio here we have visual c sharp and from there we can choose the template that we want to work with this one is the one that we are going to use as we start learning C Sharp. It's console application and from the icon you can recognize that this look very much similar to the command line window available in Windows. As you can see this is the command line window. This is it. So the app that you will create it will run on a window just like this one and it will be named console app other type of apps is the windows form application this one will create an application with a windows form user interface this form is called the windows form the other form is called the windows form so it's it's like the gray area form as you can see it's also available in the icon but let's start with the console app now the name you can choose a name but since this is our first app I write first app okay now you can choose the location let's save all of these files in the document folder inside another folder let's call it new folder 2 and if you want you can create a subfolder for your project and name it with the very same name just like your project file okay that's it now select folder it's saved in the documents inside new folder to first app you can also choose a name for the solution we will talk about this later but for now keep both of these and use the very same name for both of these you can choose the framework that you want to work with always go with the latest one 4.6.1 is the latest one uh, at the time that we recorded this lecture now you are done we choose console, we choose the name, we choose the location, we choose the framework version. Now click OK. It will start creating your project as you can see. And now it's created. Let's take a quick look to the user interface. 
as you can see on the left side here we have the coding area you can increase or decrease the font size of the coding using your mouse scroll and the control key on the keyboard as you can see click on the control key then scroll with your mouse roller and it's as you can see the font is increased now on the right side we have the solution explorer basically your software consists of uh, one solution which is first app inside it you can have multiple projects this one is the project that we are having which is first app and inside the project we have subfolders for uh, project properties for app configurations the code itself the c code as you can see and the refer references if you have any which is basically the library that, that you include in your code and if you looked here these are the libraries and if we looked at the references we have the same names system system.core system.data system.xml system.link all of these are here so any library that you uh, use will be added to the references immediately now we have also a team explorer if you have your account connected online with a programming team that will help you in your project uh, down here we have the properties it depends on the window that you are having here you can get the properties and this is very helpful when you are using windows form application because you have a lot of items such as buttons text views and other things we will talk about this later but for now you must know that this is the properties window and for now it's only showing the properties for program.cs file okay now let's head here this is the main menu you will learn how to use it as we go in the course and what we need from here is this button the start button this one is for starting your app to test it out it's basically a debug or compile and start you can go here as you can see and click start debugging or you can simply click here that's it for the first lesson I don't want to make it any longer than this because it's we are just getting started next we will talk about uh, how to write your first code and we'll talk a little bit about this main window thanks for watching this is educational engineering team in this lesson we will learn how to take input from user and how to display output in C Sharp using various methods. First, let's start with how to output data. C Sharp output is done by using the right or right line methods. In order to output something in C Sharp, we can use system or console.write line. or console dot write now both of these lines will output data on the console application screen which is basically the black window that appears here let me show you okay but let's first add an input here okay this black window that just appeared and disappeared is the console window that we will write our text or our variables on now here system here the word system is a namespace console is a class within that namespace so system and write line and write are methods of class console as you can see this class has a lot of methods 
uh, between these methods there are two which are right line and right right line writes the current line terminator to the standard output stream which is the console application write the specified string value to the standard output stream so bo both of these will write to the console application and the difference between them is very simple the main difference between write line and write is that the write method only prints the string provides to it while the write line method prints the string and moves to the start of next line as well so it does both jobs uh, writing and moving to a new line so this one will print and move to a new line while this one will only print what we want and it won't move to a new line so if you want to test it out let's write a quick code let's say here print print on and let's add another line new line to see the difference between both of these and we can do the same for the right console right a new line and let's see the output here prints on new line the second one prints on new line so the first one since it has a line word in its method name it means that each text will be printed to a new line while the second one only has the word write which means that it will only write on the same line so we have prints on new line for these while each of these has its own line and this is basically the main difference between write and write line this right and right line let's keep it to the right line can be used to write variables as well so if we have a variable a variable called x equal 5 we can simply print it here in the new line by adding the plus sign and the variable name let's say here variable value and as you can see once you start the program it will print variable value 5 which is the variable here x equals 5 it replaced the x value with the variable from here now it can also be used to combine two strings you can add another string here 5 as defined and this is how to combine two strings this is the first string and this is the second string you can combine variables with strings and we can add the variable here as you can see so it's easy to work with strings and to print data on the display and now let's move to the C sharp input in C sharp the simplest method to get input from the user is by using the read line method of the console class however read and read k are also available for getting input from the user they are also included in the c sharp class now if we want to read a variable from the user we can simply do this by writing console dot read k or read line as you can see it reads the next line of characters from the standard input stream and we add the two parentheses now this line will read an input from the user but we need to store that input somewhere so we have to define a string let's say user input equals console read line so now when the console read line is executed 
the sequence or the line of characters that it will read will be stored inside the user input variable of type string and we will cover string and integer and other data types in a later lesson but for now you need to know that this method this one read line returns a string that we need to save somewhere then we can simply print it out let's say here so whatever we enter from the keyboard will be displayed using console.write line now let's do it now let's write one two three once I clicked enter it printed the one two three that I just wrote we can try this with letters as well now again it did print what I just wrote it what happened let's debug to see what happened in this code if we double click here click on start as you can see the user input is null now I need to move to the next step it will read the user input when I click enter as you can see the user input value is the string that I just entered now when I click to the next step it will print what I just wrote because we used console.write line which is basically a way to output data and what the data that we want to print on the display is the data that we just write on the console application and took using the read line method so if we click enter and move to the next step okay let me start it again now click enter now if we move this line here just to see what's happening if we moved as you can see it did print the line that I just entered on the second line that's it this is how to print on the display how to display output and how to read input from the keyboard again we have read line we have read and we have read k read line reads the next line of input read reads the next character from the standard input stream and read k obtains the next k pressed by the user so each of them has its own different use that's it for this lesson this is how to output data on the console application and how to read inputs if you have any question regarding anything please ask in the q and a board thanks for watching this is educational engineering team now let's start understanding our coding area as you can see here we have a lot of lines and here we have numbers from 1 to 16 which is basically uh, the number of lines in our code the first part of our code is the library importing uh, lines as you can see if we need any library for text for system items we just need to click the uh, using then write the library name and if you clicked here as you can see this gives you uh, like a clue to what's written in this line now this is basically a library calling lines and it doesn't require a lot of explanation if you need to use the text you need to uh, write using system.txt and so on our main code consists of namespaces the namespace will have uh, the name of our project which is first app as you can see the namespace start with a curly braces and end with another curly braces inside the namespace we have class we can have multiple classes inside each namespace depending on our need here we have a class called program and it's the default class that's created by Microsoft Visual Studio 
and again it starts with a curly braces uh, and end with another curly brace inside it we have a method it's the main method and when we say main it means that the code inside it will be executed first in our program once we debug and run the program so uh, main is basically the main method in our C sharp application now again it starts with a curly brace and ends with another curly brace your code should be between these two curly braces so we should write our code here we will start by writing a simple console the right line and as you can see once you click right line it writes uh, a line to the standard output stream this is how you write it and if we want to write a text we must add the two double quotation mark so this is how you write your first <coughs> code in the Microsoft Visual Studio app this line will write the sentence hello world in a new line in the console application um, if we want to test it out we can just click start and as you can see it started and finished without we seeing anything if we want to hold the console application so that we can see what's written on it we must add a line called console dot read key which basically will hold the, the screen until we read or until it reads a key press from the keyboard so click on start as you can see hello world this is the sentence and now it's waiting for us to click any key so if we click enter or any other key it will disappear if we remove this line it will disappear once it display hello world and we won't have time to read it from the display these two lines are new to you but let me explain them in a hurry console is the main console window the black one that just appeared dot will allow us to access the methods or the functions that are already defined in the library of Microsoft Visual Studio C sharp application so if we wrote console then dot we have access to a lot of methods as you can see here write write line read read case set error and other libraries you can even choose the background color from here so we choose write line and read k this is a high level language so when it say write line it's basically writing a line on the console application when it says read k this means that it will read a key press from the console application so it, it doesn't require a lot of explanation uh, to understand what this line refer to and as you can see right line is basically a method that takes an input that input can be anything a variable a letter anything so if you want to uh, display a string you must add it inside a double quotation then write your string if you want to display a variable you can simply write the variable name x y z etc and one thing that you need to note is that this software is executed line by line from the start to the end of this code so if you want to see how this code is executed you can simply add as you can see here we can add a breakpoint and this breakpoint will help us identify how this code is executed exactly 
simply click on this gray area uh, we want to examine how this line will be executed double click here as you can see then click start now once we click start as you can see it display this black window it has nothing and it's now pointing to this line which is the first line that will be executed because it's inside our main method which we already uh, defined as the main area in which the code inside it will be executed first now if we moved to the next statement or step into as you can see it displayed hello world now the arrow moved to the next line which is console.readk and it's waiting for us to enter any key now if we moved forward as you can see once it finished it moved to where to this line which is the ending curly brace that stated the end of the main method and when we click here again it will turn off the console window and finish executing our code so it it goes line by line it started here then here then it ended here at the closing brace or curly brace so that's it this is how to write your first code in Microsoft Visual Studio this is basically again this is basically a code for displaying hello world sentence or text on the console application or, or the console window and we wrote it inside the main method because it's the first method to be executed in our software and we will cover the classes and namespaces in a more advanced uh, lectures but for now this is what you need to do you need to write your own sentence on the console application and add the read key to stop it and to be able to see it if you have any question regarding this lesson please ask in the Q&A board thanks for watching this is educational engineering team now let's talk about the string args we already covered every line of code here but we didn't talk about the string args now string args is the input parameter and when we write it that way it means an array of strings we will cover array in a separated lecture but for now you need to know that an array is something that holds a lot of values with the very same type which is here string so the name of the array is args the type of the elements inside it is string you can have a lot of strings inside that array now if this is the array and it's written inside these two bracelets you need to know that this is an input so where do we enter the array elements and how do we use it now if we wrote here my name is and added args zero args zero is basically the first element in the args array which uh, consists of strings but we didn't enter any args so how can we use it to display let's say my, our name my name so I wrote plus so that I can display this string and this string will be displayed afterward and when you call an array by its name and add zero this means that you are calling the first element inside this array how to use it first click on start let the software build as you can see this index was outside the bounds of the array because we started the software 
from this uh, Microsoft Visual Studio interface and we didn't enter any input inside that array so we are calling an input which is arc0 but it doesn't exist so how can we test such app we can simply go and click debug as you can see here click build solution debugging will cause an error because we didn't enter any input to that array so we just need to build the solution then click here on the program.cs and go to the okay let me okay here open folder and file explorer this will open the folder of our project in file explorer again go to the solution open folder in file explorer go to the first app and inside it go to the bin debug and this is the exe file for your first app as you can see this app if we click here it will start our app but we don't want to start it by clicking here we want to start it from the command line window or the CMD now what you need to do is start the command line right CMD then right click on it run as administrator this is the command line window now let's grab this line which is C user my name documents new folder first app and the directory for the first app click on CD then paste this value here by you click on clicking on the right mouse button click on enter now you are inside the debug folder we need to call the first app.exe file so write first first app then leave a space if we write my name here after the space this will be the first input to the string arcs which is here if we leave another space and wrote another name this will be the second input to the string arcs array so ashraf here will be arc 0 ahmad will be arc 1 we will talk about the arrays and how to manipulate them later in another section but for this string args to be explained I had to use them now if you click enter it will display my name is plus args 0 which is basically the name Ashraf now let's click enter as you can see now what what's written here is my name is Ashraf it took the input which is arc0 which is ashraf and displayed on the console application and this is how to manipulate the string args input variable to the main method so it's basically an array of strings that you can easily send data to but you can't use it from or you can't test it from inside the visual studio interface because you won't be able to send inputs it will start the console application immediately so we have to take this uh, command line turn what we did here again to summarize is that we open the command line as administrator we headed to the folder that has the exe file for our project uh, by writing cd or command directory space then the directory itself c slash user you, you shouldn't write it you ju should just copy and paste the directory after that once you are inside the directory you can simply write first app which is the name of the app without the, the dot exe extension then start entering the input arguments for the string array and once you click enter it will send these values as inputs to the string args and it will take the first one as per our code 
which is arc zero and display it here after the line which is my name is as you can see here my name is then Ashraf now what what I need from you is to try it yourself try and send your name and change the sentence to my name is and write your name instead of mine to see how it goes and do try to run the software using the command line so that you can test it out that's it for this lesson uh, if you have any question please ask in the q and a ball thanks for watching this is educational engineering team now let's talk about syntax basics as you can see this code has syntax that you need to know about which starts with a semicolon at the end of each line as you can see when we write using and the library you will have to write a semicolon that will indicate the end of this line of code again here you can find a semicolon that indicates the end of this line another semicolon here that indicates the end of this line so the first thing is you have to write a semicolon to tell Microsoft Visual Studio in C sharp language that this line has ended another thing to note is these curly braces as you can see when you click before this curly brace another curly brace enlightened as you can see it, it become gray and this indicates the start and end of this class the class named program and if you came here for this namespace which is called first app this curly brace indicates the start of the code for this namespace and this indicates the end of it so all of these are inside this namespace if you came to this method to indicate the code inside it just click here as you can see this these two curly braces are the limits so this code is written inside the method so as you can see this is written inside the class and this class is written inside the namespace so the curly braces are a way to tell the code or which code is written inside which area and for this if you move this curly brace up here this means that this class is outside the namespace so again if you want another way to indicate which is inside which you can use these signs the minus signs if you clicked here this means that the code that just disappeared is inside this namespace if you double clicked here it will appear if you want you can click here and this means that the code inside the class which is this code was hidden again you can do the same thing for the method anything that has curly braces you can do this for to know exactly where it does start and where it ends so that's it this is how to identify the code written inside each class or inside each method or inside each namespace you must also know that this Microsoft Visual Studio is a high level IDE which means that it provides you with lots and lots of capabilities one of these capabilities is the autocomplete feature if you click console then click dot as you can see this menu has a lot of methods and classes and other things that you can use without write if we want to use right line just head over to right line click on it add the two okay add the two parentheses and the semicolon then write whatever you want inside it here so 
This is called an autocomplete feature. Another feature in this high level IDE is the error messaging. If you made an error, let's remove this semicolon and try to start the program. As you can see, it's showing us that there is an error here. As you can see, it has a red line, a curvy red line. And as you can see, the error message is stating in the description what's the problem. And it's telling us that it's expecting a semicolon to be added at the end of this line. And it also has the line number, which is 15 here on the right side. So in line number 15, you have just to add a semicolon and the error disappears. This is another very good feature that you can use to minimize debugging time. Again, all of these are available inside this high level IDE, which is Microsoft Visual Studio. We will cover more later as we go in this course. But for now, this is everything that you need to know. Thanks for watching this lesson. This is Educational Engineering Team. Hey, and welcome to this new lesson in which we will cover data types. In Microsoft Visual Studio and in C Sharp, there is two ways to save data. And there is two main types of data. The first one is data that we want to keep for a very long time. And such type of data is stored in databases and this is an advanced topic that we will cover later in this course and we will also cover this topic in c sharp advanced programming course the other type of data is called variables and this type is for storing different type of variables for a temporary period hence the life cycle of the program so once you start the program these variables are created and once you shut the program down or exit the program or close it these variables will disappear from memory so you need to know which type of data do you want to store so that you know is it a variable or a database data and in this lesson we will discuss the variables let's first look at the first or the main two categories which are primitive data types and non-primitive data types primitive data types include integers floating point characters and boolean Let's start with boolean. Boolean means a true or false value. It's mainly used for checking conditions and it does a very great job. So it has only two values, either true or false. The second type of primitive data types is character and it's written as char or char as you can see here. And character means basically a character in English language. So one is a character, two is a character, A is a character, B is a character, and the list goes on. The third type of primitive data types is the floating point. Floating point means numbers that have fractions. So we have two types, float and double, depending on how large the fraction is the last one is integer it's the most common one it can be byte short int or long depending on how long your integer number is now let's move to the non-primitive data types it includes classes interfaces arrays and strings we will cover all of these in lessons as we go on in this course but for now 
let's learn how to declare your first variable in C sharp. If we moved here to our C sharp code, the first thing that you need to write is the data type. Then leave a space and write the variable name. Then add a semicolon. Let's do it. We want to define an integer. Let's call it age and add a semicolon. Let's add another variable. Let's call it string and give it the name name so we defined an integer primitive data type and a string non primitive data type we called the first integer age which is the variable name and we called the second integer name which is the variable name now what if we want to assign a value for each of these variables it's simple you can just write age equals 5 for the name you can write name equals and since it's a string you have to write it inside double quotation let's say it you let's say Asher. okay now we define two variables we assigned a value for each of these variables and if we want, we can use this. My name is, let's write the variable name here. And let's move this one here. Or let's write a new one. We want to display the, the age. Console.write line. Your or my age is plus age and we must add a semicolon that's it now let's run it as you can see my name is Ashraf my age is 5 now we can do something to reduce the number of lines in our code so instead of four lines for defining two variables and adding an initial value we can simply let's comment these lines by clicking here comment out the selected lines you can add these two slashes which means that this line won't be executed it's here as a comment now if we want to remove this, you can simply uncomment and here's your lines. I want to connect, comment them. Now let's add int age equal 5. As you can see, now I defined the variable named age, its type is integer, and its initial value is 5. The same thing for the string. And let's add the value. Now I initialized another variable called name. Its type is a string and the initial value is Ashraf. Now we define these two in two lines instead of four lines. Let's just delete these. Execute the program. Again, the very same execution. We can debug it and see the exact execution. Okay, double click here, now click start. Okay, as what you can see here. Here we have the values, age equals zero, name equals null. Now, once we move to the next step, age will be five. So, again, age equals five here. Now it will initialize the variable called name it's type string and we'll give it a value of ashraf so the name here will turn from null to ashraf 
and again let's move other step name now equals ashraf now it will execute the first line right line method that will appear here if we get back here my name is ashraf then it will move to execution of the next line which is the age my age is now it's here my age is five then it will move to the console read key and wait for us to click on a key or something as you can see here again now it moved to the end of these two parentheses and that's it now this the execution ended this is how you can debug the code to track each variable and how it gets its own value so in this lesson we learned that there's two different type of variables primitive and non-primitive and we can store data in variables or databases and what's the difference between both of them we also learned how to initialize a new variable depending on our needs age here is a number name is a string and we learned how to display these on the console screen thanks for watching this lesson if you have any question please ask in the q and a board this is educational engineering team hello and welcome to this new lesson in which we will cover type conversion in c sharp type conversion is converting one type of data to another type it's also known as typecasting. C Sharp provides the following built in type conversion. You just need to write the name of the variable that you want to convert or the data type, let's say int dot to let's say we want to convert to apply type conversion in C-sharp let's say that we want to convert the age to string so you just need to write the name of the variable and then click the dot and you will get the to string which converts the numeric value of this instance to its equivalent string representation now the output of this method will be a string basically it will look like this five written inside two double quotation the same thing applies for different type of data so let's say that you want to identify new variables let's remove this code and identify four variables an integer called i a float called f a double called d and a boolean called p if you want to convert all of these into text or string you just need to go and write the variable name i dot to string as you can see there's a list at the end of this list we have to string and just add two parentheses you are good to go these are two parentheses it, it won't take any input and the output of this will be a string if we want to print that string we must add console dot right line then add our code inside it Now it will print out the integer as a string. We can do the same for all of these four variables. Let's say f. This will convert float to string, double. This will convert double to string, and b. This will convert boolean to string. If we click here, you will get all of these four variables true is transferred into string and printed here 
same goes for all of these three variables which are integer float and double now you can see them as strings another way to convert to string let's say we have the value 75 you can use the convert dot to string and write whatever you want here let's say that you want to convert 7.5 and this will return a string you can print it using the console.write line and let me add another parentheses here okay that's it now let's comment all of these because we won't use them now it will print 7.5 as a string inside the console.write line if we click start as you can see 7.5 and the convert has a lot of other functions as you can see all of these conversions let, let me show you to boolean it will convert a boolean variable uh, to a boolean variable convert the value of a specified object to an equivalent boolean variable to byte to character to date time to decimal to double to integer to integer 32 to integer 64 depending on how long is the integer to ask by to string to uh, unified integer and as you can see the list goes on depending on your needs you can use any of these another thing that I have to mention is that if you did define an integer value and a double value let's say you have double uh, why you can't store this value inside this variable so even both of these are integers one of them is integer and the other one is float or double in this in this case if you did this if you write int z equals let's say y and you wrote a quotation here it will give you an error okay. if you check the error here it's telling you that it cannot implicitly convert type double to int an explicit conversion exists you are missing a cast casting is basically a way to explicit or to explicitly convert uh, between two data types so what you need to do here is to cast and casting is basically adding two parentheses and writing the data type inside them so we know that y is a double but we want to store the y value inside an integer so we must cast it to integer if we wrote here int it will store that value which is y inside z now there is another error use of unassigned local variable you can assign it and add anything inside it as you can see now we are good to go this is called casting casting is basically a way to explicitly convert one type to another so y here is a double and by adding two parentheses and the variable type between them which is int we convert the y from double to integer and now we can store it safely inside the z variable as you can see it's not that hard it's just a quick way to convert from one type to another explicitly without using the convert or dot to methods i know that this was a long lesson but i think that you get the idea if you need to change between any two types inside C-sharp depending on your needs, you have the means to do that either by using a predefined methods or by using casting. That's it. If you have any question, please ask in the Q&A board. Thanks for watching. Happy learning. Now let's talk about operators. An operator is a symbol that tells the compiler to perform specific mathematical or logical manipulations. 
C# Sharp has rich set of built-in operators and provides the following type of operators. Arithmetic operators, relational operators, logical operators, bitwise operators, assignment operators, and other miscellaneous operators. We will discuss each of the following in this lesson. So, please try to take a note about the operators that you are hearing about for the first time. So, let's start with the arithmetic operators. As you can see, these operators are basically used for arithmetic operations, such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. The plus sign means adding two variables together. The minus sign means subtract second operand from the first one. The multiplication sign here is used to multiply both operands. The division sign is used to divide numerator by denominator. This sign is used, the percentage sign is used to modulo, as a modulus operator and reminder of after an integer division. The two pluses increment operator increase integer value by one. The two minuses decrement operator decrease integer value by one. As you can see, this is how to apply each of them. A plus B, A minus B, A multiplies B, and B divides A, B modulus operator or percentage a a plus plus a minus minus so again these do the very basic arithmetic operations and as you can see these four are the most common these three are also used but less common than these four now let's talk about the relational operators two equal signs are used to check if the values of two operands are equal or not. If yes, then condition becomes true. If we put this sign before the equal sign, it will check if the values of two operands are equal or not. If values are not equal, then condition becomes true. So it's like the uh, exact opposite of this one. So if the condition is true, it will uh, provide the opposite of the output so here it will be true if these two operands are equal or not so a equals not b is true if they are not equal and as you can see in this operand it's a little bit hard or tricky to check it out but it's used mainly to check inside if statements so This sign checks if the values of two operands are equal or not. If values are not equal, then condition becomes true. If the values is equal, A equals B, then the value will be false. This sign is used to check if a value is greater than another value. So. It checks if the value of left operands is greater than the value of right operands. If yes, then condition become true. This does the opposite. If the value of left operand is less than the value of right operand, if yes, then condition becomes true. These two are the same as these two but with adding the equal sign so it will check if the value of left operand is greater than or equal this is the addition or equal to the value of right operand the other one will check if the value of left operand is less than or equal to the value of right operand so if yes then the condition will become true these are most commonly used in the if statements and to check conditions inside our code and we will take a quick example uh, on how to use them after we finish explaining each type of oper operators in C sharp so let's move forward this is the logical operators section as you can see if we added two AND signs this means logical AND operator if both the operands are non-zero then condition becomes true so, if A and B are non-zero, 
meaning if one and one, then the value will be true, otherwise it will be false. These two signs are called logical or operator. Just like in the logical uh, operations, if any of the two operands is non-zero, then condition becomes true. So, if A is 1 or B is 1 or A and B are 1s, the value is true. Otherwise, if A and B are zeros, it will be false. Again, uh, let's move on to the next one, which is not called logical not operator used to reverse the logical state of its operands. If a condition is true, then logical not operator will make it false. So, if A and and B is true, adding the not before it make it false. And if A and and B is false, adding the not before it make it true. This is also used for multiple condition in if statements inside our C sharp code. Now let's talk about the bitwise operators. Bitwise operators wo work on bits and performs bit by bit operations. The truth table for AND, OR, and this sign as, are as follow. Here we have P and Q. These are operators or operands in this case. P and Q are 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. Now, if we make AND between P and Q, this means that it will only be true the AND operation if both of P and Q are 1. So here it is, 1, 1 equals 1. If there is 0, the result will be 0, as you can see here, here, and here. Now to the OR operation, or operator. If B and Q are written with OR between them, if any of these two, P or Q, is 1, the result will be 1. So 0 and 0 will result in 0. There is no 1s here. While 0 and 1 will result in 1. 1 and 1 will result in 1. 1 and 0 will result in 1. So, if any of the two operands is 1, the result will be 1. Here, if any of the two operands is 0, the result will be 0. Otherwise, it will be 1. Uh, here, as you can see, P and Q, if both of operands, of both of these operands is identical, so 0, 0 or 1, 1, the value will be 0. Otherwise, it will be 1. So here we have 0 and 0, the value is 0. 1 and 1, the value will be 0. But when, it, when, when it's 0 and 1, or 1 and 0, these two operands are not identical, the result will be 1. Now let's assume that A equals 60 and B equals 13. Then in the binary format, they are as follows. If A equals this value in binary and B equals this value in binary, if we make it A and B, it will work like that. Let me show it to you. Okay, let's take the pen. Now, as you can see, 0 and 1, if we use the AND operator, it states that if any of the two oper operands is 0, the result will be 0. Here we have four zeros. This means that we have four zeros here as well. Here we have two ones, two ones. W they will be one and one. Here since we have zero and here zero, this means that both of these values will be zero. When it comes to the OR operator, if any of the values is one, the result will be one. So here we have one, and here we have one, here we have one, here we have 1, and here we have 1. So it will be 1, 0, since there is two zeros here. Then 1, 1, 1, 1, and here we have two zeros, two zeros, then 0, 0. And the final result will be like that. If we came to the third statement here, we already mentioned that if two values are, of the two operands are identical, the result will be 0. So here we have 0, 0 it will give us 0, which is this one. Another 0, 0, it will give us 0. And here we have 1, 1, and 1, 1, it will give us 0 and 0. And here we have 0 and 0, it will give us 0, because they are identical. The two 
these two are not identical and these two are not identical so, and this one is not identical so these will give us one one and one now let's talk about the not as you can see here not a means you need to reverse all of these values so zero will become one and one will become zero so zero zero will become one 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 will become zero zero then one one will become zero zero again zero zero will become one one again that's it this is how to do deal with bitwise operators now let's talk about assignment operators as you can see the equal sign this sign is a simple assignment operator assigns value from right side operands to left side operands plus sign adds and assignment operator it adds right operands to the left operands and assign the result to left operands minus equals it's called subtract and assignment operator it subtracts right operand from the left operand and assign the result from these two to this operand multiply equal it it means multiply and assignment operator it multiplies right operand with left operand and assign the result to the left operand which is c same for these two and when it comes to these two left shift add assignment operator it will lift the value to the left it will shift the value to the left uh, by two here's an example c uh, less than less than equals two is same as c less than less, less than less than two so it will shift left the value by two this one will shift right the value by two and these are the and equal or equal and bitwise exclusive or assignment uh, these are used for shifting values and for doing multiple operations now let's talk about miscellaneous operators as you can see size of returns the size of a data type type of returns the type of a class so if you wrote type of and the name of the class will return us the type of that class size of int it will return the size of the integer that we are using and return the address of a variable the multiplication sign pointer to a variable so pointer a creates a pointer named a to a variable and this uh, question mark and this sign conditional expression if condition is true then value x otherwise value y so if we wrote it x a question mark y this means that if the condition is true it will give the result the value of x if the condition is false it will give the result the value of y is determines whether an object is a, of a certain type as cast without raising an exception if the cast fails so these are used in a more advanced classes so we'll talk about them in the c sharp advanced tutorial but for now you just need to know that they are there and they are they can be used if you need them that's it for this lesson if you have any question please ask in the q and a board thanks for watching happy learning now let's take a quick example on how to use operands inside our code first let's define few variables that we are going to use to make a quick calculator let's add double x y and z now we want to take the input value from the user so what we need to do here is to write x equals console dot read line which we already explained in a previous tutorial in a previous lesson in this course so what you need to do now is simply read the value from the, in the user but as you can see here we have an error cannot implicitly convert type string to double so we need to convert this string to double what's the function used for that we already explained that in the 
conversion lesson you need to write convert dot to double and add the two parentheses let's add the console dot read line inside them now it will read the double uh, that the string value and it will convert it to double then we can take it and paste it here this is how to enter a double value for the x variable now what we need to do is to read also the y just copy this one and paste it here name it y now we have x value and y value they are both numbers we need to sum them using an operator z equals x plus y this way z will equal double x plus double y so whatever the user will enter as a value of x plus whatever the user will enter as a value of y will be summed and then added to the z which is here as you can see now we want to print the output so console dot right line now the value equals plus z that's it then let's add the console dot read k to stop the window now let's run the program as you can see here we have our black window if we wrote 5 enter 6 enter the value equals 11 so we just use an operator which is plus to sum these two variables and we can enhance our program so that we can ask the user to enter value here we can ask him to enter first value and here we have we can ask him to enter second value then the sum of plus x and plus y now let me explain let's run it then i'll explain what i just did so enter first value 5 and the second value 6 the sum of 5 and 6 equals 11 what i just did is a string concatenation with variables so this in this area it will display the sum of and equals these are strings and I added variables between these strings this is the x value that the user, the user just entered and this is the y value that the user just entered so in order to concatenate text or string with variables you need to add the plus sign if we want to add more text you need to add a plus sign before and after the variable you can just leave it here and add another text without concatenate it with the previous variable so you need to add each variable you need to add a plus sign before it and after it if you are going to write another text inside that right line sentence so text variable text variable text variable here we have two pluses because we have a text before it and a text after it here we have two pluses because we have text before it and text after it here we have one plus before because we only have text before it we have nothing there is no text after it so we are only using one plus sign if we want to track this program to see what's happening double click here let's first try to track it now let's start by console right line start let me minimize the screen so that we can see what's happening now as what you can see here 
the x, y, and z values are zeros. If we moved on, it's asking us to enter a value. If we moved on to another, the next line, we added 5. As you can see here, 5 is the value of x. It's added here. Now, if we moved another line, we'll print the second, which is enter second value, then another line, and let's write 6. As you can see now, we have 5 in x and 6 in y. If we moved forward, it will sum the two variables. And as you can see, z has the value of 11, but it's not yet displayed. If we moved forward, the sum, as you can see, it executed this line. The sum of 5 and 6 equals 11. And here we have the values 5, 6, and 11. That's it. This is how you can easily use operators inside your uh, C-sharp application. Any type of operator is usable. We will introduce other type of operators as we go on with this course, with different lessons in the uh, conditional uh, and loop sections. But for now, thanks for watching. That was everything. If you have any question, please ask in the Q&A board. Hey, and welcome to this new lesson in which we will talk about a quick example to summarize things that we have learned this far. This app will be for calculating your age. And the way that we are going to calculate your age is by using the date time variable. So let's define a new variable of type date time and let's call it my age now what you need to do is to read the user age from the console screen so let's write a line asking him to enter his age okay let me add these two parentheses okay enter your age now let's take the variable my age and make it equal console dot now we need to read the line that the user will enter and as you can see here we can read it but since the value that the user will enter will be a string it won't be able to con cannot implicitly convert type string to system to date time so whenever we get this message we must convert the variable entered here to a date time variable so we will use the convert dot to date time and we will add the two parentheses we will add the console let read line inside these two parentheses so it will read the input as string then it will convert it to date time this is the first step for reading the date time and this way we have the user age which is uh, which will be stored inside this variable which is called my age the next step will be the equation the equation will be used to calculate the age depending on today's date and time. So, first, let's write date. Okay. Date time dot now. This will give us the value for the right now the time and date, which we are going to use so that we can subtract the value of my age variable, the one that we just read, to get the value of or the age of the user, so my age. Now, by doing quick calculations, this will this will subtract the date and time that the user just entered from now date and time. And to proceed with this quick equation, we need to get the total number of days from this 
total number of days after getting uh, this result which is subtracting the date and time of now from the age that the user, the user just entered and by getting the total number of days we can get the number of years how can we do this by simply dividing this value by 360 but you need to know one thing which is this is not a number so we cannot use it or we cannot divide it divide this number uh, this value by 360 because this is not a number this is a date time variable so in order to convert it to number we must use the convert dot to int let's say 32 and let's add two parentheses so that this code will understand that we are converting this and the result from this line will be stored in a variable called years okay now years will equals what years will equals the date time now minus the age we will get this value and get the number of days in this value then we will divide the number of days by 360 to get the years and this line will give us the number of years and we will store the number of years inside this variable again we used convert to integer to convert this value of date and time into integer so that we can divide it on 360 to get the number of years now what you need to do is simply print the age console the right line okay now your age is plus year and that's it then you can add another line years to state that you, the age was written in years and let's add the console.read key so that we can make sure that it won't make any uh, issues and the display will stay until we click okay now let's write our date of birth let's say 1989 January 1st if you click enter your age is 30 years and since today is 2019 we can simply open the calculator and as you can see here 2019 minus as you can see the result is 30 which is the same number that we got in our application which is basically 30 years that's it for this lesson this was a quick lesson in which we introduced a new variable type which is called date time we also uh, used the data output and data input console write line and read line we used the conversion convert to integer and convert to date time uh, so we covered most of the topics that we took this far in this course if you have any question regarding anything please ask in the Q&A board and I'll be more than happy to help you thanks for watching this is educational engineering team hello and welcome to this new lesson in which we will talk about if statements Decision-making structures requires the programmer to specify one or more conditions to be evaluated or tested by the program. Along with a statement or statements to be executed if the condition is determined to be true. And optionally, other statements to be executed if the condition is determined to be false. Now, let's talk about the if statement structure it starts with a start button let's write start 
now after the program starts it will read input from user so in order to take input and output data we need to use this shape after reading the input okay let's move the arrow after reading the input from our program we will check this input if it matches the thing that we want or not or the condition that we want or not to check a statement we need to use this shape and let's move the arrow here we will ask if true now if the value written is the required value so if the condition is true we want it to display a welcome message so let's take the output again okay let me just remove this and print print welcome now if the value is false we want it to end the program so let's add an ending shape and now moving from here to here if true it will print will come if false it will just end our program so as you can see again start input data if matches what we want as a condition it will print will come otherwise if false it will end the program execution now what we need to do is to turn this into code let's go to Microsoft Visual Studio as you can see here we can read an input using console.readline and we can store the value in a string string input equals and we can add a line to ask the user to in input a value as you can see now we can use the if statement you need to add two parentheses and two curly braces inside the first parentheses as you can see here between these two parentheses we need to ask if the input equals let's say x if it equals x we want it to print a welcome message otherwise we want it to end the program now let's add console.read key to make it stick now let's try our program now enter value if we wrote x it will print will come then in the program if we wrote any other thing other than x let's say y it won't print anything it will end the program that's it this is how to use if statement in the next lesson we'll talk about if else and nested if statements so stay tuned thanks for watching this lesson if you have any question, please ask in the Q&A board. Happy learning.